Hello. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Ira Smith, president of Ira Smith Trustee and Receiver Inc. Firstly, the Ira Smith team hopes that you and your family are safe, healthy, and secure during this COVID-19 pandemic. Ira Smith Trustee and Receiver Inc. is fully operational. Both myself and Brandon Smith are available to answer any questions you might have, either by telephone or video meeting. We are holding all meetings that way in order to keep everyone safe and healthy. Today's Brandon's blog is about the meaning of receivership. He provides his checklist of things you should know. He's not trying to make you an insolvency expert, but to give you the main highlights so that whenever the topic of receivership might come up, you will know what everyone is talking about and you will be able to hold your own in any conversation. So I hope you can watch until the end of this video. I know you will get value from it. What does it mean when a receiver is appointed? Receivership is a remedy for secured creditors. A chartered bank or another lender loans money to a company and takes back security against the assets of the company as collateral for the loan. If the loan goes into default under the security agreement, there'll be various events of default. And upon one or more of those events of default, the secured lender has the right to appoint a receiver. And receiverships are part of the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. In Canada, only a licensed insolvency trustee can be a receiver. There are two kinds of receivership appointments, either a private appointment or a court appointment. A private appointment, the secured creditor retains the receiver and appoints the receiver in writing and the receivership begins. Actually, before the secured lender can do that, they have to give written notice of default to the borrower, the company, and make demand on the company for full repayment of the loan. And the secured creditor must give at least 10 days written notice before enforcing its security. Now the company, the borrower can waive the 10 day notice, but the secured creditor cannot. The second kind of appointment is a court appointment. That's where the secured creditor believes that the supervision powers and the authority of the court and aid of the court in making the necessary decisions will be required. There may be contentious issues, legal issues, practical issues where the authority of the court is required. In that case, after the secured creditor demands and the 10 day notice expires, the secured creditor can make a motion to the court for the appointment of the receiver. When the receiver is appointed, the first thing the receiver must do is go into possession and control of all the assets of the company covered by the lender's security. The receiver must make an inventory of all the assets, make sure they're safeguarded, make sure they're adequately insured, no matter where they may be located. As well, the receiver must identify, are there any third party goods on the premises or any goods where suppliers still have the right of revindication. Now, keep in mind that the business was probably operating right up until the time of the appointment of the receiver. 
So the receiver also very quickly has to make other decisions such as, was the business shut down before the receiver was appointed or was it still running? And therefore, if it was still running, does it make sense for the receiver to continue the business operations? Are there any experienced employees willing to work for the receiver in order to keep running the business? Will the assets of the company be worth more if they're sold on an operating business basis rather than on a shutdown liquidation basis? Can the receiver operate the business cash flow positive? If the receiver believes that the assets will be worth more on an operating business basis, but cannot operate on a cash flow positive basis, then the receiver has to know where it can borrow the money from in order to cover the negative cash flow. And in pretty well every case, the only place that the receiver will be able to borrow from, the only place, the only person anyone will be willing to lend money is the secured creditor that appointed the receiver. The secured creditor in that case would have to be willing to fund the losses. Are there any legal, regulatory, or environmental issues that would preclude the receiver from operating the business? Can the business be run safely? These are just some of the considerations for the receiver. The receiver has to answer those questions very quickly in order to get a game plan set up, get the approval of the appointing creditor, and if it's a court appointment, to write a report to court, serve all the parties, and get court authority for the tasks, the steps that the receiver wishes to carry out. A question we are always asked is, what is the difference between receivership, insolvency, and liquidation? So I hope by now, from what I've already spoken about, you have a very basic but good understanding of what receivership is. So what is insolvency or insolvent? That is a financial condition. The insolvent company cannot pay its debts as they normally come due. And perhaps also, if you had to liquidate all the assets, you would not get enough cash to pay off all of the company's liabilities. It is a financial condition. That is the definition of insolvency. Liquidation, I've already spoken briefly on what a liquidation sale is. That is when the assets of the company are being sold off because the business is not being run anymore. The assets are being liquidated. That's the first example. There's also something called a statutory liquidation. That happens when the shareholders of a solvent company, a financially healthy company, decide that they're not going to run the business anymore. The assets are collected in terms of receivables. The assets are sold off in terms of inventory and equipment, intangibles, patents, trademarks, and then you're left with the cash. Because the business is solvent, the company is not only able to pay off all of its liabilities with the cash, but they are also potentially able to provide a return to the shareholders. That is what a statutory liquidation is all about. Another question we are asked is how does a receiver get paid? A receiver has a legal right to the, having a first charge on all the assets of the company subject only to any trust funds claims that there may be against the assets. As well, the receiver will get the guarantee of the appointing creditor to fund the costs of the receivership, including the fee and disbursements of the receiver. If there are sufficient assets 
to have a realization that will pay back the secured creditor in full, including all the costs of the receivership, then the secured creditor does not suffer any loss. However, if the assets are insufficient, then the secured creditor will suffer a shortfall. So I hope that you have gained a basic yet good thorough understanding of what the meaning of receivership is. The Ira Smith team is very experienced in advising companies that are in financial trouble, advising lenders of companies in financial trouble, and in acting as a receiver. We understand the concerns and issues facing the entrepreneur of an insolvent, troubled company. We understand how to restructure those kinds of companies. So hopefully they will stay far away from receivership or bankruptcy. We know that it is not the entrepreneur's fault. There are many conditions today that have caused business interruption that are well beyond the control of the entrepreneur. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all or need any help or assistance at all, give either Brandon Smith or myself a phone call, shoot us an email message. We would love to hear from you and we would love to speak with you. So the Ira Smith team hopes that you and your family remain healthy, safe and secure.